Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Another wonderful Wednesday. Is it Wednesday already? I can't get comfortable. It's always right when we get started. I Everybody, said, welcome shift. back. My name is Kelsey. I'm glad to have you all with us tonight. I'm uh, just dressed in dra- different. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Glad to have you all with now. us. Let's just uh, get yeah. this thing kicked off. Let's hey, start back over. It's Pride Month, you know. Yeah, I am I'm, proud to be a I'm Christian. proud to be an American. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be a male. Um, yeah. Proud God to bless be. America. Uh, oh, you can't see it. There proud you to go. be, you know, loving Jesus That's and my following pride Jesus. Flag. And I don't want to stir up any hate or discontent, but Christians. Yes, the rainbow stand. is a symbol of God's promise, not a symbol of the world's we confusion. You got to take a stand. And if you want to, let's just get the family room kicked right off the bat. I'll, I'll start it out. Here's a little behind the scenes uh, <laughs> snippet for the family room. While we get going, let us know where you're watching from. So here's an interesting fact, and I don't know if you knew this, but you probably have, because I'm pretty sure I brought it up in a sermon before. But knowing you, you've probably forgot. Just kidding. What were you talking about? Uh, <laughs> I think it's <laughs> Revelation 4. It's in the Bible. When <laughs> when, uh, when the, the throne room is described in the colors that surround the yep. throne of Jesus, yep. it's actually the colors of the rainbow. Yes, so to me, that screams, that's why Satan hijacked the rainbow, because he's putting it in God's face that... What is the symbol of his promise, the colors yep. that are around his throne? He has now used it as essentially kind of uh, the symbol of his throne here Absolutely. on earth because that is such a big, he big thing in. going on nowadays. And, you know, the, 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 the rainbow thing is everywhere. So to me, that's just He's enthroned Satan on trying immorality. to smack it in God's face. But morality uh, is his throne. You know, I've, I read the end of the book and uh, it doesn't end too good for the devil if you haven't gotten there. Amen. So, welcome. welcome to the family room. Just starting right off with the slow Here stuff. We go. And then we'll <laughs> just <laughs> diving right in, making everybody mad. Uh, so, coming up real quick with the announcements, we've got Dining with Dignity is in tomorrow, uh, June 6th, 5.30 at 6. Tomorrow. I always have to look at my, my watch for the... I guess it's up there in the corner, too. Uh, yeah, it's up 5.30 to uh, 6.30, Dining with Dignity. That is Feeding the Homeless Downtown. You can go on our website for all of these, by the way, familychurch.social, uh, under the Connect tab, under the uh, events page, and you can see everything that we have going on. The next Women's Fellowship Night is June 13th from 6.30 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. Guest speaker. Guest speaker. Lisa um, Casillas. I'm glad you remembered who it was. Lisa Casillas, they're looking forward to it. They've set up a nice spread. They're looking forward to seeing all the ladies there, 630 in the event room. Uh, she is very excited about it, so mark your calendar, put a reminder on your phone, put an alert there so it'll ding, 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 so you don't forget. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Men's group, the men's fam group, the Beast Feast. got to start pushing that. June 22nd. Uh, if you haven't done that, Go to the website, look at that. That's four, uh, five. five. Five, so I need to update the website. That. Five to seven, we're having uh, all the guys bring, um, make your own, you know, best, whatever Meat, you whatever. grill or cook or, you know, s- smoke on the grill, whatever. I, uh, I, I've i actually, I got a small brisket and a pork butt today. Come on. So several guys have told one me of they're those bringing third both. thing. We'll Clay Murphy's doing one. ribs. <laughs> Clay's going to do the ribs. I'm doing some oxtail. Uh, big uh, big guy, Dino, is doing uh, some kind of meatball. He said it's his specialty that he does. So men, you provide the cook. You do the meat. We'll provide the sides and the drinks, five to seven. Some exciting things that we're going to be doing. This is kick off the men's group. Just more than anything, just getting the men together. Do some man stuff together. We need to get our men, all the men in the church, young, old, everybody, come join us. Yes. And then uh, for the youth, uh, if you don't remember, the youth currently during the summer, we're not meeting um, weekly. We're meeting monthly. And we have a youth group um, on the app that we communicate from. But if you you don't have access to a phone somehow, uh, you can actually access the groups on the website, and you could still message that way. But under the event page, you can see the Youth Water Day. That is June 25th from 6 p.m. till 8 p.m. Uh, water slide, fun games. I think they were talking about doing um, the kickball thing 
or something like when I don't I don't remember if it was set in stone so don't shoot the messenger if this is wrong but I think we were going to do the uh the wet kickball where you have like the kiddie pools full of water yes yes so I think that was something That's we're playing on and then also the big one coming up the art of marriage conference here in the house June 28th and June 29th uh that one you do need to register for um so please just go to the website familychurch.social/events the art of marriage All is on free. there and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. So it's a busy June. We uh, we're trying to slow the, the month of summer down, but it's busy. It seems like hectic. No. Foot on the gas. Foot, Foot on the Full gas. Send. We don't stop. We don't slow down. No Jesus slump. Didn't. We're all going. jump. We're. You working on your? So I'm trying to get. Them, I'm getting. The, it's the zaddy effect. I'm trying to get. On I am it. interested in seeing what you're going to steal from my sermons that you've been talking about the last oh, couple of times. <laughs> everything. Everything. And I'm up in Ocean Isle. We're up, they're up there this weekend. I'm going to be uh, ripping a few things off. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking really, forward I'm to really seeing my friends up in North Carolina. Yes. So this 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 uh, wonderful Wednesday. We're ready. We are here to talk about Sunday's message. Don't read the comments uh, if you haven't seen it. It's on our YouTube. Uh, <laughs> don't stop this because this is live. So after this, go watch that. And then, uh, of course, you know, this gets uploaded as well for the backup stuff. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Oh, real quick, uh, while you're watching, share this, um, you know, just click share, leave some comments and stuff. The algorithm is, uh, kicking us in the butt for the last couple of days. Even if you're watching it later. Yeah. Especially share. if you're watching it later, make sure you, you, uh, even if you don't want to watch the whole thing or if you just want to put it on in a TV in the other room and leave it playing yes. under our sermons playlist. So it keeps it going. Uh, we're kind of getting smashed by the algorithm right now. And I've actually, I've just seen that for our last, uh, well, actually like pretty much all three of my last sermons, there's almost like no views. The, the United States isn't even popping up on the watched right. areas because it's just getting smushed in the, uh, in the U S. So, so the way to that we need, um, you guys to help get the message out. Not, it's not about just blowing the church up. It's about getting Jesus out. But we need you guys to, you know, share everything, comment on everything, leave it playing, play it over again, you know, everything you can helps. Amen. If you're watching tonight, glad to have you with us. If you're a first-time viewer, let us know. Let us know what you're doing, what, how your day was, how we can pray for you. Part of the whole outfit of the family room is to get right back there in your living room and say hello. We're glad to have you along with us. Uh, but yeah, the algorithm on YouTube has lately turned against us, and that's okay. Uh, because that one means you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. it Man means can't cancel God's what stuff. God has has uh, what God has called. So yeah. I, I fully believe, you know, the blessing. We're gonna we're gonna get going, and you know, it'll turn back around. But quick notation: I had a uh, conversation this afternoon about the land. One more, uh, just to keep you all informed. We're looking at 60 acres of land, 10 miles from the front of the building uh, in Elkton. They are currently doing some. Uh, water and soil sampling out there. They found something that they're having to work on. We're having to mitigate that. Uh, but our realtor called me today and reminded me that we have a deadline coming up on the 23rd of this month. Ooh. He just wanted to remind me. He just said, don't forget, we have a closing or a contract deadline on the 23rd. So we're just, y'all keep praying. Uh, it's very important that you do that. There's a couple of things that we're trying to mitigate out there and work on. Um, but we're working on it, and the, the signing date is supposed to be sometime in July, but keep us in prayer. We're working on it. I'm excited. There's it's, a lot it's going moving on. on. Yes, there is a lot going on, and there's and According to him, it is the last big chunk of land out there on. that is not spoken for. Is what now? Yeah, that was, a, that was just for the family room. <laughs> it, was, it is one of the last big chunks of land out there that has not already been bought. Well, it's already been spoken for. It's been spoken for. That's what I mean. It's been spoken for, but yeah. nobody, I mean, they oh, can't no, touch it's, it. It's, it yeah, but nobody, everything else nobody has been bought up by who? Developers. Developers have bought everything out there. Hey. And so. Yeah, I'm, well, never mind. I won't get into that because I know I'll rough some face. Praise the Lord. But uh, I, I'm excited to see the growth. Um, you know, it's frustrating, I guess, with, you know, the way that the roads are set up and traffic and everything and that can get you mad. That also means uh, the city and the area is not dying. There's more people oh, to growing. reach. It means that the economy in our area mm -hmm. will be booming. There will be more commerce, mm -hmm. things like that. So there's always uh, different perspective to, perspectives to look at things. And you can throw a pity party and get upset about uh, the growth. Or you can realize, hey, we can reach a lot more people and impact a lot more people. We can feed more people. We can, we can help build more stuff for their houses and the wheelchair ramps. 
all kinds of stuff. So I, I'm excited for the growth. But uh, yeah, this 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 thing we are discussing tonight was don't read the comments. And if you had um, a favorite phrase or note or whatever you took from that, uh, drop it in the comments, <laughs> and uh, we'll think about reading it. Since the message was don't read the comments, but I I, I, uh, I really enjoyed this one. Luke four was the uh, go ahead. The th- oh, you didn't oh. Oh, I've got yeah, it. I've oh. got it. No, go ahead. I like to bounce off of you. What What was the question? There was no question. I had to have people send me notes this week. Luke 4, 1 and 2. Right? One, one, what, what? Luke one and 4, two. I went 1 to 13. Well, they sent me, oh, they've got it broken down. 1, 2, 3, oh, they've yeah. got it all the way down. Well, you got stuck. I didn't write any notes this week because I was sitting, I was on the front row spellbound. <laughs> spellbound at the revelation that is you know that's why i like having uh the internet and things backed up because sometimes and i was talking to um kelsey's mom about this actually sometimes it's nice to just be connected in the moment yep. focus on what's happening yep. soak it in and then go back and watch it and take notes because yep. then you can pause it because i find like i had I, I watched one sermon when we were coming one time um I think we we're coming home from Georgia or something. And there was, it was like one of those that like, it was that message was for you, you know, those things. And it was just like, bah, 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 and you're trying to write it down and you get like halfway through the sentence and then they're saying something else that you want to write down. So then you forget the first point and then you're just like, oh man. So you have to keep going back and watching it. So that's the beauty excited. of it. I stepped up at the end of the service to close. And I, I said, if anybody's taking notes, please send them to me. And I had a bunch of people send me notes. That's exciting too, because I think it's a sign of a healthy church when you've got people sitting in the sanctuary taking notes, writing mm-hmm. thoughts, keeping track of what you're saying. That's exciting. I do that at the same time normally on the front row, but then like that, I'll watch it during the week so I can catch up with what was said because there's so many times I miss something. Kathy Murray watching from Sandy Ridge. Glad to have you there, Kathy. Hope you're doing Hey, I got your email, and I'm glad to hear that you're doing better ahead of schedule. Keep it up. That's good. Keep it That's going. Good. Keep it going. So, yeah, the, the sermon, uh, don't read the comments. Um, I, I played it off of, obviously, the temptations of Jesus. Uh, so it was kind of like a, a double, double-edged kind of mm-hmm. message where it was, you know, for one, not giving into temptation, how to, how to resist the mm-hmm. t- uh, temptations that we face. And then the other side of it was just not listening to the comments that people are making, not listening to... Uh, the comments that the, it, like the, you know, the enemy is mm-hmm. making towards you or anything like that. Um, and you know, that, I don't know, it was just a fun one for me. So, you know, I opened up with the celebrities reading mean tweets and I brought <laughs> up, uh, I brought up the, the nasty comments that we got. And, uh, I said, I wanted to talk about it earlier. We got a nasty post on our Facebook for the family room thing for this tonight. Uh, you know, one of the typical arguments that, uh, you know, God, it's all a delusion and it's all fake and there's no evidence. So I brought, this is called the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you can't tell, it's a very large, rich mahogany. And we're going to read it all books. tonight. We're going to read it all starting in chapter one. No, this is uh, a massive book full of evidence on the, whoa, okay. There's over a thousand, there's over people, a thousand watching people watching right on now on YouTube. That is a giant book on a bunch of evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the thing with people's um, comments that they want to make that there's no evidence for the Bible is completely false. There's so much evidence yes. for out there, um, and there's people that aren't even Christians that acknowledge the fact that there's so much archaeological evidence that, that supports uh, the Bible and the history that is mentioned in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so it, it's really not that there's a lack of evidence. It's just people just don't want to believe because they right. don't want to change their life and they want to continue in their old, own way. So it, it's really just in the information age where everything is on the Internet, all we really do is stay in our ignorance uh, because we just refuse to change anything about our lives. Uh, you know, we just want to keep going on the way that we're still going. But uh, there is so much evidence, even, even science, given enough time, starts supporting the Bible and everything mm-hmm. that is found in it. Uh, and, and not even that, but just the resurrection, the fact that Jesus showed himself to over 500 people mm-hmm. uh, and then all, you know, a bunch of different people at different times. And I don't know about you, but if I was lying about something, 
uh, and I'm getting threatened to be martyred and killed over it. Right. I'm not going to stick to that lie. Not a chance. Uh, and there was a lot of people that stuck to it because it was the truth. So it's not that there's a lack of evidence. It's just there's a, a complete um, massive amount of ignorance in mm -hmm. people that just don't want to change. So I say I, people reject the Bible not because the Bible contradicts itself, but because it contradicts them. Yeah. It contradicts their life, their lifestyle, their choices, the way that they live. Uh, if you have an open mind and you read it, it is God's word. It is God's word. In prayer, we talk to God, but in the Bible, God talks to us. So it speaks to everything. And, and another way to put it is they're they're not uh, they're rejecting the Bible because they don't want to reject themselves. Mm -hmm. Because you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about just doing everything that you want to do. Uh, Absolutely. You know, follow, following Jesus, caring for others, uh, helping for others. You know, just being generous to others, all that kind of fun stuff. That really is the meaning of life. Like we're all just supposed to help one another and help cultivate the earth and, and create and do things. But absolutely, we want to just um, you know focus on ourselves. Unfortunately, so one of my you already have something that you wanted to no no one of my favorite things. Let's, we'll switch it up. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some notes and then you can bounce off of it. So <laughs> one of my favorite ones that I had made was about how the temptation in Jesus Jesus's life came. Immediately after he made his public declaration of faith and getting baptized, mm -hmm. and I said that uh, transformation makes you the target. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can live your life in the world, and it will be... You know, it's a double-edged sword now that you think about it, family room. Glad to have you all with us. Um, the, Solomon said, the way of the transgressor is hard. And so, you know, I've been kicking this idea around for a long time that some people say living for Jesus is hard. Uh, it is. It is. That, just for that very reason, the moment that you have, the devil loves a shining mark. The moment that you turn away from the world and you start walking with God, you find out how quickly principalities and powers, how the warfare comes against you and, and all of that. The algorithm on YouTube turns against you. Uh, all of that. Uh, but the way of the transgressor is, is hard in, in another way. It's a hard life that you don't want to live. I mean, the moment that you transform, you ha you become a target, and that's, that's you a said fact for the all of the us. devil loves a shining target. And what um, I immediately think of is, uh, okay, so well, I can't remember what the video was, but it was one of those dumb videos you see on on a Facebook reel or YouTube or whatever, where there's someone walking in the woods with the flashlight, and they can hear someone like you know, call it like, oh, I see you and blah, blah, blah. So that's what immediately I thought of that because it's like, okay, Satan loves a shining target. So when you're in the world, the world is already full of darkness and the majority of it is darkness. So as soon as you start following Jesus and become a Christian, you get that light inside of you and that light starts shining. And it, when you're surrounded by darkness and you're full of darkness, you're not standing out. There's nothing to focus on there. You're, you're literally, for lack of a better term, you're kind of of no importance to the devil because you're already on the fast track to hell. But as soon as you get saved and Jesus has, you know, put his spirit inside of you, suddenly you're shining and you stand out more. It's mm -hmm. like if you go in a dark room and uh, everybody's wearing all black and you can't really see anything because it's all dark. But if, if, if there's one person in there with a white t-shirt, you can immediately see that we have uh, the horses at the house. Um, they're all, well, um, Indy is, I don't know the color, Kelsey's going to kill, chestnut or something. I don't know, he's a dark brown. That's how I would call it. <laughs> chestnut. I don't know. Put it in the comments, Kelsey. Mauve. And then, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Evie, the small one, which she's only like barely taller than a dog. because She's a mini. Uh, she's also dark brown, but, but King is a paint. So he's dark brown and he has white. Mm -hmm. And that's something she said. That's why she always liked paints because you can find them in the dark really easy. And that's how he is. You can you can look out, even if it's super dark and the moon, like there's not a lot of moonlight, there's not a lot of starlight. You can find the little specks, little, well, little when he's, I mean, it's, you know, far away. You can see the white on him and you can immediately go, okay, there's King. So that's, that's, that's how we are as Christians. We, we have, we have stopped being dark. We've stopped being of, of little to no importance because we were already, we were dead in the world. We were dark in the world. And then Jesus came in, gave us the light. And suddenly now we're a target because we've been transformed and we're standing out. And now he wants to try to pull us off of the path that God has placed us on. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the comments, 
what was the driving force of that? It, you know, the, obviously, the text was all about Jesus and the temptation. And the comments, you were, you were in that sense that you were talking about, don't listen to the comments, don't listen to the temptations of the devil. Mm -hmm. that, was your, that was your driving point? The, yeah, so this one is... Um, sorry, I was reading Brittany's thing at the same mm -hmm. time. This was uh, the same kind of thing um, where I had gotten this idea a long time ago, like a, a really long time ago. I don't even know the date. I didn't even have it written down in here. I literally only remembered the title. And it was a weird thing where I was kind of just given the idea of don't read the comments. And then the text popped mm -hmm. in my head of Jesus in the wilderness. And I, you know, scrambled that down and that was all. Didn't go back and look at it. And then, um, like I said, Sunday, I had planned on moving from Acts 1 and Acts 2 and then continuing that kind of series into Acts 4. And then, uh, I don't know, I just felt like God was moving me in the other direction. Like, no, we need to, we need to deal with this first. We need to, we need to go back to this. We need to talk about this because there's, there's just so much distractions. I mean, you know, you Come see on. like talk the about stuff, that. the stuff coming up now with, uh, you know, the, and I don't want to get all political, but like with the election and everybody's worried about the prices of things. We're worried about who's going to be in what office. We're worried about, you know, mm -hmm. how's this person going to go here? You've got, 24-hour news feeds that are feeding you doom and gloom. You've got the internet that doesn't really provide much of anything that will, you know, be positive unless you want to go to look for it. But then at the same time, the algorithm is designed to keep you to keep wasting your time and just keep scrolling. Yes. So you just become a zombie instead of focusing on your kids. Uh, and then, so it's just, there's all of these distractions that we have in place to keep us from devoting ourselves to any one thing. Uh, the, the, I remember when, when we were in the men's group and, and Mitch had said, you know, if the devil can't stop you from doing one thing, he'll get you to do all of these other things. So yes. you can't focus on just that one thing to do and, and to complete and to focus on and to, and to drive home. So it's like we have all of this stuff fighting for our attention and fighting for our our time and our devotion. And, and something as simple as just literally getting in the Bible every morning and reading a, a five minute devotion mm -hmm. or a chapter a day, something as, as simple as that, mm -hmm. we, we will neglect because we just focus on everything else. We wake up and, oh, I've got to, I've got to handle this today. And I, oh, I, I immediately, you know, we wake up in a negative mindset. I, I, I didn't sleep good. I didn't get enough mm -hmm. sleep. I'm already hurting. I've got that meeting today at work. I've got to get the kids up. We got to get the kids out of the house by this time. What am I going to make for bread? And it's like everything in your head immediately goes to everything except Jesus. We think about, how did I say it Sunday? Satan gets us to think about everything under the sun instead of the sun, Jesus, above everything else. And the only difference between two is an O and a U, and you. Hey, that, was cool. hey, that came to me Woo! right there in the moment, and I was like, that's good. What's Veron you Ash, even said I'll, so. Oh, that's yeah, good. I almost said it like Ron Ash says, where he's like, where, oh, where he said, I'm gonna he, give where myself like, off. Exactly. I thought about, it, I was like, I don't think anybody will get it, and then I'll just, <laughs> I'll look like a jerk. But I thought about, it, I was like, man, I'll get it. I and I had that there. cash in my pocket too. So I, was I like, sat there ah. the entire time, and I thought, what a great uh, opportunity to speak to and to address all of the voices that people hear in the world. And all of the voices that they hear in their head. The Apostle Paul spoke to that. He said, there are so many voices in the world and none of them are without any significance. So every voice that's in the world, positive, negative, good, bad, all of that is, has a significance. Our problem is that we have so many inputs coming at us constantly now with this technology. The technology of it all, the phones, the iPads, the internet, the comments that it's hard for people to filter any of that out. And we're, we're trying to take it all in, and it's just overwhelming and consuming us. And so we hear all of these comments. Uh, and I just thought about it, the constant, the, whole, the entire time you were talking, how many times people have been said, have been told, you're not going to make it, you're not good enough, you're not qualified, you're not capable, you shouldn't be there. Um, all of that, it's, it can drive people to the brink of insanity. Yeah, we are, we are, it, it, it is a weird time because it's like, um, like social, it's a, it's a cool, like technology is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's a cool tool. I don't have to carry around a giant book 
I've got my Bible here. I've got logos with mm-hmm. all my commentaries and all these other books, whatever. You, you know, you think like like a, a, a was it a Kindle mm-hmm. or anything like that. You don't have to buy all these paper books, right. you know. And you know, if you're wanting to help out the environment or whatever, and you don't want paper. You know, you can put everything digitally on a phone. You can reach out at any moment in time to someone across the world. I mean, we have people that watch our our live streams and everything in in Nigeria and in the UK. And it's just like all of that happening at the same time. And, And I brought up, you know, Sunday how when I was working across the state or even like away on um, hurricanes and storms, you know, I can, I can not just text Kelsey and the kids, I can FaceTime them, I can yeah. call them, you know, and now you have caller ID where you don't have to worry about, you know, who's calling, you don't have to wait right. for the answering machine to pick it up and, you know, oh, and then pick, oh, hey, I just walked uh, in the I door think, and But it's not, it's that. not good for us, though. It's overwhelming. It's too much. Well, there's just too much. I'm just from it's an old man's perspective. We didn't have that. When I was a kid growing up, we didn't have that. Uh, we had a phone on the wall with a cord on it, and that's as far as it could go. Uh, now it's it's you're never out of pocket, you're never out of contact, and it's too much. That's, I think that's one of the things that the Apostle Paul had in mind when he said that we have to learn how to take every thought captive. All of those thoughts, because the thoughts are nothing more than words that have been spoken over us that now have become our thoughts. Exactly. The comments. And every day that you live, how many, how many supposedly comments do you think you receive in the run of a day? Um, Good, I couldn't bad. even imagine. I mean, not even, not even just that. Not even if you look at um, look at the comments on social media, but just the comments that you you have in your head mm-hmm. about yourself, about others, about any mm-hmm. given subject at any time. There's just that constant flow, and it's super easy to just get in a, a, a negative mindset yes. and get in that negativity, and just just. You know, that's why I brought up the thing of, of the comments with, like, with preaching. And, you know, if if I felt I did a bad job, you know, and, you know, yeah, if somebody said, oh, it wasn't good or whatever, you know, that might sting a little bit. But, you know, if, if Kelsey was like, I, you know, I didn't really like that one or whatever. And if I already had a, even if they don't make a comment, sometimes the lack of a comment is also, <laughs> it can you know, because it's like, if you didn't think you did it, if you, if you were used to, Coming down and mom or whoever was like, hey, that was great. Great yeah, job today. Good service. job. Great job. Mm-hmm. Great job. And then you felt you did a bad job mm-hmm. and you came down and they didn't say anything and you were used to hearing good job. You'd be like, oh, okay. Obviously, I didn't do very well. And then you're immediately like, your oh, mind. Gosh, you start and your mind just starts racing. And My dad used to do that. All that. Every time I'd walk off the platform on Kings Estate Road, firsthand, I shook was dad's. So he would always say something. Great job. Good word. All of that. I think one of the things that drove this message home to me is the importance of um, encouragement, the importance of lifting people up. Y'all in the comments, let me know um, what you're thinking, what you're thinking right now about all that. Uh, Did anybody today speak something negative over your life? Did you, somebody give you the finger? Did somebody cut you off in traffic and then yell at you? Uh, Did somebody at work, was somebody at work rude to you? The comments... Uh, that you've heard and growing up, you know, hearing your, your, your people around you tell you negative things, you're, you know, you're worthless, you're useless. We don't, I feel so sorry for children these days because I, I can imagine, I see some of the stuff that happens to them in public in their shopping areas where parents are just yelling at them and angry with them. I, I just, if that happens in public, I shudder to think what happens in private. Yeah. Uh, to not be encouraged and how important it is for us because I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here while you're talking, trying to remember the numbers about how many positive comments it takes to overcome one negative. I think it's something like seven to one. Somebody research that and let me know. But I think yeah, it's, it's like at least seven amount. to one that when somebody gives you a negative comment, it, then it requires at least uh, at least seven that I can remember to overcome that. Makes that. sense. And they always talk about the oh, I don't I don't remember the, the the term, but like the. I don't know how else to put it, like a criticism sandwich where you give like a positive feedback and then you give the criticism and like the negative and then you 
<laughs> sandwich it again with another positive. It's like you have to buffer people now instead of just being like, hey, I've never heard of a that was bad. Sandwich. Don't do that again. Now you'd be I've like, well, another I really like the way you tied your shoes. Uh, please don't ever talk to me again. But your pants look nice. You know, like it was like <laughs> I've what? never heard of that. You never heard of that? No, uh, I've heard I of have. another sandwich, but not that kind. Uh, but yeah, the the importance of lifting people up, and yes. that I started. It's funny you were saying that, and I stopped on my notes where I was talking about the temptation. Uh, where Jesus, you know, said to worship the Lord your God and serve him only and how the enemy will tell you that your situation is pathetic. You know, what you're going to mm-hmm. going through is too pitiful and you're never going to amount to anything and all that. And then you have to remember that God is the one that is all powerful. He is the one that is always present. So mm-hmm. that's when you have to remember, like, you know, you're not going to see exactly maybe when the, the shift will come, when the wind will come and, and when the chain, the change will come. But, you know, sometimes it's good just to, to, to put on that worship song, put on that praise song and just lose yourself. I've, I've, found myself a lot more doing that lately where if I'm kind of in a foul mood or in like a little funk and I'll just put on one of my favorite worship songs and then just start you know because when you first put it on you're just like yeah whatever and you don't even really want to sing it but if you start singing along with it and then Mm -hmm. get into it Mm -hmm. even if you're kind of like almost like faking it till you make it but maybe it's more of a faith in it till you make it David encouraged himself that's yeah the Bible said you you gotta faith don't fake it till you make it faith it Till you make it. We'll, no. we'll switch it right there. So you what put that on. What about the Greek word for it is written? The Greek word for it is written. Uh, I was going to write it down, but I didn't know how to pronounce it. So I was like, I'm going to just say the Greek word. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know how to pronounce it. But man, oh, let me find that. Because that is was written. so good. It is written. It's also in the tense. It has been written and it still stands. It written. has been. There it is. It has been written. It is written in a tense that is both a completed action and a continuing state that results from that action. So when everybody, ooh, you can get me fired up on that. When everybody Let's wants go. to sit there and talk about, oh, the Bible's just a history mumbo book. Jumbo. And the Bible's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And the Bible's just a bunch of stuff that happened back then and it has no application till today. That is such a lie because it is written. It still stands written. The Bible is the living word of God. That's why you can read that and see how it speaks to you in your current situation. I can't sit there and go, okay, well, I'm, I'm like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and I got thrown into a furnace and now Jesus is in the furnace with me. No, but I know that when I'm going through something, he's in there with me. Come on. You know, I may not be uh, the Israelites and have Moses lead me up to a, 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 a dead stop at, at the Red Sea and suddenly, you know, here's my enemies of my past coming up behind me, but I do know that God will bring me to a place where there is nothing else other than to do but to trust in his provision that Ooh. he will make a way to go through on dry, ga- dry ground and, and the fun part of that is also that you still have to walk between the walls of those waves knowing that they could come crashing down on you Mm -hmm. just that i mean that is to me that is we always think of you know oh the waves stood up and then you just walked right through you don't think as they're walking through and there's the walls of water i forget (laughs) is it what is it was it the prince of egypt or whatever where they did that and you could see like a whale swim through on the wall you know what i don't remember i think it's the prince of egypt or whatever something that disney kind of did that was cool but it's like you could see the whale, the whale, and it's like just how much of a testament to how strong and awesome God is that it's like he made you a way, but even while you're walking through that way, you're still looking at it like this could come down at any moment. If God removed his hand from this, if he took off his provision from this, if he took off his protection from this, this would come crashing down on my head, and I would be drowned just like my Thank enemies. God. So, it, you know, it's like... That's the whole thing. He, he will bring you to something to get you to focus on him, to put your faith in him, to continue to trust in him. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, that is just such an amazing thing to me is that somebody put a mad face on the thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always just trusting in God. I, and I heard, I've got to record it and clip it up so I can send it to you. I heard um, a sermon today or yesterday I don't know. I've gotten to the point now where I almost can't even listen to music in the gym Mm -hmm. because it just doesn't motivate me anymore. I'm I'm just literally only listening to sermons. Welcome to my world. It is the weirdest thing. But he was talking about how uh, uh, 
the people that complain like, oh, I don't like how we're taking the Bible and we start putting ourselves in the stories and I don't like how a lot of the worship songs have the word me in it and it talks like it's not talking about me and I don't think the Bible's about me. It's only about Jesus and I don't think it has anything to do with me. It only has to do with the people of the of the world and, and in reality, all that is is that you're not just, you're just not wanting to take the historical context from then and apply it to your life so that you have to make a change in your own life. Mm-hmm. It's the word. It is the that, Kathy Murray is, made a comment a little bit ago. That's why it's so important for us to stay in the Word. Uh, we need to put Bible reading on the top of our to do list every exactly. day. Exactly, you get to get the Word of God back into your life so that you, it flows out of your life. People don't need. To, my mom used to say, "People don't need to hear what comes off the top of your head. They need to hear what comes out of the depth of your heart." And that's why David said, "Your Word have I hid in my heart, so that when I open my mouth, out of the abundance of my mouth, my heart will speak, and my heart will speak the Word." Domingo says five positive comments to every one negative comment. Thank you for that. Sticks has had a great day, so thank you for that. We're glad that you are. Sometimes last week I think he was having a rough week, so maybe yeah, this is a better that's day. A good, good day. Good I know to today I had uh, I had you talk about people cutting you off. You know I've had. All that good stuff. And Not then, me. you know, I've just great the devil testing you and you're like, eh, and then you got to, you know, just Jesus, give me the patience and keep going on. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the staying in the word and, and applying it to your life and, and just realizing that, you know, it's, I don't know, to me, that's, it, it speaks to everything. That's mm-hmm. why they say the Bible, what did they say? The, what does it stand for? B-I-B-L-E, the basic, basic instructions, instructions before, before leaving, leaving earth. earth. Yeah, so and and I just don't get the people that just want to read it and they're like, well, that's it, and you know, like what? Check the box. That's it's that. not it's not just that. It's not just like, well, this is what happened and that's it, and you know that you're not going to get anything else out of it. What then? What is the point mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit giving you revelation when you read the Word? It's supposed to speak to you in. Uh, different ways at different times, I would say. Mm-hmm. So when you're going through one season, you'll read this one passage and it'll speak something to you. And then as you mature and you revisit that, it'll speak to you in a whole different way and apply to you in a whole, not that the the text or the message change, but just that your revelation and your experience and your, your um, <clears throat> given your experience, that's how you'll, you'll look at it differently. And mm-hmm. it can speak to you differently. You know, it doesn't change the meaning of it, but just the way that I guess it means to you and the way that it speaks to you. Back to the comments. <laughs> Back to the comments. Um, I think it's one of the important elements that we need to consider and continue to think about also is the importance of who you allow to speak into your life. Um, the voices that you hear, the, the mentors that you have, uh, the role models that you follow, uh, so critical. Uh, I, I just get stunned sometimes when people... I, I hear who they listen to, and you're like, oh, my goodness, why would you listen to that? And, you know, false teaching and, and all that is a reality of our day, but it's important who you allow to speak over your life. A couple of weeks ago, I had somebody come to church that I hadn't seen for a little while, and they came up to me and said, hey, uh, God sent me here today. I have a word for you. And because <laughs> I've known this person a long time, I said, go ahead, you know, speak up. I wouldn't say that to everybody. Uh, yeah, in fact, I, I have that. not. I've had people walk up in church and say, hey, I've got a word for the body. Yeah, well, uh, you can give that to me, and I'll give it to the body <laughs> if I feel like it's important or, or it's one that is applicable. Uh, but this person spoke it, and it was a word from God for my life. And who you have speaking into your life and over your life is so critical. Yeah. I mean, and that goes into not just personally, but literally everything. Uh mm-hmm. Television, music, yes. anything like that, all yes. of that can change the way that you think, change the way that you act, and you don't realize it. That was one of the things, like uh, Kelsey and I talked about when she was on here, how she mentioned mentioned how like the music um, that you listen to, mm-hmm. and then you know once you kind of shift away from that and you go back to it, you're like, oh, what? This is what I listened to. Yeah. I, I yeah. watched. Um, I don't want to get like crazy off because we're we're, we're going to wrap up shortly. But there was, there's a video going around, um, this guy, Wes Watson, uh, I, I don't know, there's some panel of guys, and this dude, he's like this, apparently he went to prison, came out, and then he started helping people, and from my understanding, he's kind of just lost himself in it, because he started making a bunch of money, he's this big, big, muscled up, tattooed guy, and he's sitting there talking to all these, and it's just a crowd of guys, and he's talking about how, 
you know, uh, if, if you don't have the baddest girl and the nicest car and you're not making this much money and doing that and you don't have a ripped body and all like that, his whole definition of success was com- just complete materialism yes. and all that. And then this other guy that's a Christian said after him, he's like, you know, I, mine's different. Like, I, I don't, I'm not really worried about all that money. I'm, I'm focused on my family, providing for my family, spending go. time and taking care of my family. He's like, you know, Jesus said it best. What does it benefit you if you gain the world, lose your soul? Right. And this dude got so, you could just tell, immediately convicted of course. and just lashed out. And uh, I guess I'll rag on myself for a minute. He, he cussed so much. And it was one of those things like, you're like, holy cow. Wow. But then you think back of like in the past, how you were maybe in a previous job, but kind of before you met Jesus or got super, yeah, because I remember how line work and all that stuff was. And I was watching that. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, is this how I, and I don't yep. think I was anywhere near his level because yep. it was like. That's just how you sound. Every other thing and you're watching it and. <laughs> And uh, since I talk about how I go to the comments, of course, I was reading the comments in the video and somebody was like, this dude sounds like one of those 14 year old kids that just found out what a curse word is. <laughs> and he was just like, well, he was all to do it. But what, and what was hilarious too, was he had on these like super tight white jeans with rips in them. And everybody was like, how are you going to try to act like an alpha male with white pants? He's a oh, and I can't, I'll life. have to tell you the other comment when we get done. Remind me, because I, I can't say it live. I like to listen to people that encourage you to believe in a biblical way. I like to listen to people that encourage you to uh, to be better. Yeah. Not better than everybody else, but better than your previous self. One well, of my that's favorite. how these two guys, well, not the tattooed guy, but the other guys, yes, they were like, exactly. they started going into the Bible Completely and everything, and he was just losing his mind. Yeah. And they're like, dude, like, we're not even. We weren't even like coming at you until you started attacking us. One of our favorites. And one of the guys was like, "Tell George Michaels he wants his pants back." <laughs> one of my favorite people to talk to is Clint Brown, um, because Clint has a way, and other people have said this. Clint has a way of causing you to believe that there's nothing you can't do. He really does. Those are the kind of people that you got to have in your life. Because don't read the comments. I could think you could qualify that and say, "Don't read the negative comments. Don't listen to the." terrible things that people say to pull you down, to bring you down. Don't listen to the lies. Don't listen to the, the temptations. Listen to the people in the comments in your life that lift you up and elevate you and cause you to believe and make you want to do better. There are people in your life that cause you to want to be a better person. And those are the people that you need to invest your life, invest your time in. Those are the people that you need to give your ear to. You don't need to listen to the negative naysayers all day, every day. It doesn't no. do you any good. No, and and I think that is it's it, that's such an important thing is, you know, show me your friends, show me your future. Yep. You know, your friends are a prophecy of where you're going. And the way that I always look at it is, there, there's only two directions you're either going. You're going up or down. You're growing, mm-hmm. or you're or you're dying. There's not there's not really any stagnation because if you're stagnant, you're dying. I mean, you look at that. You look at stagnant water. If there's no movement, that's when all the Mm -hmm. bad stuff and all the bacteria starts growing on it, and you can't go in that water anymore because it's just disgusting and all the dead stuff, and then it starts killing everything. So, in reality, it's you know, if if you're stuck, you're you're moving backwards, you're dying, and you have to keep growing. So, if you're not surrounded by people that are pushing you for growth, positive growth, not just you know, like oh, how many girls can you get, and how many Mm -hmm. cars can you own, and how many beachfront properties can you have and, and, and rental properties and verbos yeah. and all that stuff. Not that like having nice things is bad, but if that is your whole focus, you're completely missing the mark on what life is all about. Amen. And you're just trying to fill a hole that, uh, th- that's not the right way to do it. So yeah, you've, you've got to have the people in your life I think that, so. that push you for positive growth. It's one of the secrets and that's of why it's so important life. to stay, uh, around Christian people and, and things like that. that it's one know, of the secrets of a powerful life is to live it like that. Our time's up. Let's wrap it up. Get out of here. Let's wrap it up. This is uh, Wednesday night in the family room. We thank you guys for joining us. We will see you, um, I don't know about next week. We probably won't have it next week. No, that's right. Next week we, <laughs> next were, week, we, we will not see out. you, but we will see you the next time that we see you. Sunday morning, 10, 10, 10 a.m., in the house, come early. Somebody commented something that, you know, are you online early? No. The online starts when the countdown starts at church. Uh, but come early, get a seat, shout the house down, praise the house down, 
You yep. know, don't just sit there quietly like a Baptist. Get up and jump up like a Pentecostal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we will see you. And then uh, I'm excited for everything that's coming. Get ready. Good night. And you guys Thanks have a great there. rest of the week. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you. And you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.